Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 BMS. Today we're going to be looking at the AGM-88 Horm missile in POS EOM mode. The Horm, or High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, is designed to home on radar emissions from surface-to-air radar systems. It can detect, attack and destroy a radar antenna or transmitter with minimal input. It uses a fixed antenna and seeker head in the nose, a booster sustainer rocket motor powered by a smokeless solid propellant to achieve speeds of over Mach 2 and it has a terminal homing capability which provides a launch and leave capability. The warhead section of the missile is designed to inflict sufficient damage on the target antenna and waveguide system to render it inoperable and ensure complete destruction of the Horm missile guidance section. Today we're attacking the 1031st Air Defence Battalion, which is equipped with SA-2 surface-to-air missiles. The SA-2 guideline, or S-75 Davina, is a Soviet-designed, single-rail, ground-mounted, high-altitude air defence system. At battalion level, the Fansong trailer-mounted fire control and tracking radar controls six rail-mounted V-750 missiles. It has a range of 40 miles. It is handed off threats from its parent regiment by the Spoonrest Early Warning 3D VHF radar, which has a range of 171 miles. The Fansong can track a single target and can guide up to three missiles simultaneously. The V750 missiles reach about Mark 3 26 seconds after launch, have a 430 pound warhead, and are accurate to about 246 feet. We have marked the Fansong radar as pre-planned target or PPT-59 and we will be attacking it with an AGM-88 Horm missile in POS EOM mode. First we'll set the master mode to air to ground. We can do that either with the F6 keyboard shortcut or the A-G button on the ICP. Check that master arm is set to arm. We're looking at the Threat Warning Auxiliary, or TWA, panel. The S indicator on the search button blinks at 4Hz when the Electronic Warfare System, or EWS, detects search radar painting our aircraft. To make search active, press the search button. The S indicator is now steady. The Activity indicator illuminates if the EWS is powered and detects a radar painting the aircraft. We're looking at the Radar Warning Receiver, or RWR. The RWR displays threats according to azimuth position relative to our aircraft and threat level, with primary threats displayed in the inner ring, secondary threats in the outer ring. With search enabled on the TWA, a SAM radar in search mode will be displayed as an S before its acquisition symbol would appear, providing an early warning of the presence of a search radar. We're looking at the SMS page on the right MFD. Check that AGM-88 is selected at OSB-6. To power the missiles, press OSB-7. In BMS there is no restriction in how long the missiles can be powered. As the home sensor is in the missile, we need to continue setup on the weapon or WPN page. To view the weapon page, press OSB-14 and then OSB-18. The green line running left to right across the page is the Launch Status Divider Line, or LSDL. Information below the line is pre-launch, above it post-launch. At the bottom of the page are two numbers, 3 and 7. These are station numbers, with 3 being under the left wing and 7 under the right. There's a home missile on each station. 3 is highlighted to indicate it is the active station. You can toggle between the stations with the NWS button, which is Shift Forward Slash by default. POS and EOM are selected by default at OSB1 and OSB3. POS or Position Mode is used to attack static SAMs. It has three sub-modes, EOM or Equations of Motion, PB or Pre-Briefed, and RUK or Range Unknown. At this time only EOM is implemented properly in BMS. In POS EOM mode the harm requires two inputs, a threat type and a steer point. In this example the threat type is an SA2 and the steer point is PPT59 as briefed. The Horm missile will then fly towards the steer point and when 5 miles from it, its seeker will become active and it will perform a 40 degree scan looking for its handed off threat. 
Trait types are listed in tables. To cycle through the available tables, press OSB2 and return to Table 1. The threat types themselves are listed on the left from OSB20 to OSB16 and on table 1 the numbers are abbreviations of SA2 to SA6. To hand off an SA2 to the home missile on the active station press OSB20. Four lines of information have appeared below the LSDL above station 3. The 2 is the handed off threat, 0 for the steer point and below that are the timing flight of the missile and the expected time of impact. The steer point is always the active steer point when the missiles are on the aircraft. Each station will only remember its handed off threat. Change the active steer point to 59 using the ICP and the DED. By default keypad 4 to enter the steer point page 59 and then enter. Toggle the active station from 3 to 7 using the NWS button and hand off an SA3 to it using OSB19. Now change the steer point to 5-6 using the ICP and DED. Note that both stations are now using steer point 5-6. We'll change the steer point back to 5-9 using the HSD. To view the HSD press OSB 13. Increase the range using OSB20 until the SA2 threat ring appears at the top of the page. Make the HSD the centre of interest with the display management switch or DMS down button, which is control end by default. Note the crosshair on the page at our position, which is the radar cursor. Move it towards the centre of the SA2 threat ring using the radar cursor controls, which by default are the shift arrow keys. Then press target management switch or TMS up. Steer point 59 is now active. Return to the weapon page with OSB 14. Note that both stations are now using steer point 59. The harm missile on station 3 is now correctly set up for our brief target. We're looking at the heads up display. The vertical line running top to bottom is the azimuth steering line or ASL and it performs much the same function as it does in the CCRP delivery mode. To the centre right is R00. This is an indication of the right or left turn in degrees required to centre the ASL. To the bottom right are two numbers separated by a carrot. The number on the right is the active steer point and the number on the left the distance to it. The number 60 is the nominal range of the harm missile which is affected by altitude, speed, loft angle and any manoeuvring required by the missile to reach azimuth. The two horizontal lines below it are the maximum and minimum ranges. Towards the bottom of the hood is the harm field of view or FOV. This is centred on the active steer point and indicates the 40 degree field of view of the missile seeker. It will flash when the missile is in range. When the time in flight reaches 2 minutes we will fire the missile. Magnum. Note the post launch information above the LSDL which indicates the missile's time to impact, its steer point and the handed off threat. You may now change the steer point on station 7 without it affecting the missile fired from station 3. As always, hope you enjoyed that and please feel free to comment, like and subscribe if you did. And I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.